section seven of the rover volume one number one this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org the rover volume one number one edited by seba smith and lawrence Libri. section seven the spy twas in the middle of the year eighteen ten when the british army after various struggles and hard-fought actions succeeded in occupying the very heart of spain that the enemy greatly reinforced and far exceeding our forces and numbers had taken up a very strong position in our front their outposts were so much advanced that the greatest vigilance was necessary to prevent a surprise but ours was on the alert and ready to check the slightest movement rare indeed is it to find a british soldier slumbering at the post of honour the night for the time of year in a southern country was dark and lowering all was hushed and silent save the gentle sounds which broke upon the ear of the sentinel's footsteps as they paced to and fro on the short space of ground allotted as their post or the visiting officer on duty cautiously passing from one spot to another to see that all were attentive and steady a gentle rivulet ran by the right of the british outposts ever and anon a distant murmur of a movement in the french lines struck through the still air then would the officer place his ear to the earth by which from frequent habit he could almost ascertain the numbers in motion at all events he could determine the direction they were moving in two or three deserters this night crossed a ford higher up than the army and presenting themselves to the pickets were conducted in the usual form to the headquarters whatever information they gave whether it was considered true or false or what might or might not have been the cause so it was that an attack which had been meditated at daybreak was countermanded and the army remained quietly looking at their opponents making the necessary dispositions to secure if possible a victory it being decided for no doubt good reasons to avoid at least for the moment a general action and simply to hold the enemy in check on the first of these nights it was that i found an amiable young friend and officer gazing on his eliza's miniature and employing his fancy in the pleasing retrospection of the happy hours he had passed with those he loved when my sudden appearance startling him for an instant broke the delightful charm destroying all his airy blissful visions and bringing him back to the full feeling of his real situation with its various sensations a warm and friendly squeeze of the hand assured me that he forgave my interruption which was in no small degree increased on my introducing a person who greatly excited his curiosity figure to yourself a man dressed in a sort of french italian costume a face stained with a yellowish hue a box suspended from his shoulders by a leather strap containing snuffs tobacco perfumes trinkets and a variety of articles likely to be purchased by officers and soldiers these he showed and expatiated on with all the volubility and gasconade of a french peddler following an army our youth's curiosity was so greatly excited that all his thoughts of home and love were for the moment obliterated the question of where the man came from how he came why he came and many others were put in rapid succession i bade him look on the man and tell me if he had ever before seen him he gazed intently on his face and figure and assured me he had not thus did the disguise appear perfect though our young friend added mournfully his features 
at first reminded me of my dear friend in but that is not possible for in a skirmish with the pickets two nights ago i was told he had been severely wounded and taken prisoner while driving them from an ambuscade the scene now became of intense interest friendship sincere and disinterested friendship was put to the test and proved poor frank cried he heaven knows if i may ever see him again i loved him as a brother from early youth his heart was the seat of goodness his soul of honour and yet he had his full share of life's misfortunes in stood with his eye fixed on his youthful friend's changing countenance and the various feelings depicted on his expressive features then suddenly raising his cap of disguise casting on him a look full of pleasure and beaming with friendship most ardent calling on his name he rushed to embrace him inquiries of how he escaped what were his wounds and why was he habited in his present costume were the immediate consequence of recognition for the first it appeared that being closely engaged at the edge of the rivulet as before described dusk coming on when the pickets were all pell-mell together in fell by a blow from a musket which for a time completely stunned him and on recovering all was still no being with life remained near him not exactly recollecting the spot on which he was and it being dark he cautiously forded the stream at a little distance believed he was joining his troops it having already been passed more than once at break of day however he found out his mistake when to prevent being taken by the enemy he was forced to make a circuitous route of some miles ere he could venture again to attempt passing over to regain his own lines this however he at last did in safety and no sooner arrived than he was told an intelligent officer was wanted to volunteer for a particular service ever on the qui vive to show the greatest zeal in his profession he instantly waited on the general of the division became acquainted with the hazardous and arduous nature of the undertaking when he not only offered himself for it but begged the general's particular interest in his behalf this he most cordially promised him not only from his knowledge of his abilities as an officer but in all other respects especially his perfect acquaintance with several languages the french particularly which for pureness elegance of pronunciation and fluency could scarcely be surpassed by even a parisian the general's report to the commander-in-chief proved sufficient and our gallant friend was appointed to a post at once of the highest consequence to the army and of peril to himself yet was his brave heart undaunted he received his instructions arranged his disguise and was now devoting this last hour to the delights of sincere and real friendship it was indeed an hour awakening sensations among the three friends easily to be imagined by minds capable of sentiments calculated to make life an enjoyment to describe their feelings would be difficult suffice it to say that when the moment of parting arrived it was one of melancholy in the truest sense of the word it was midnight in was conducted by his two friends to the extreme verge of the advance sentinels where a fervent and rapid adieu was exchanged when in rushed forward to prevent those strong emotions of friendship overcoming his feelings which with such a triumvirate would otherwise certainly have been the case and have sent poor in on his way depressed and sorrowful our two young officers retraced their steps in silence to their separate quarters and retired to rest offering up a prayer for the safety of their early friend behold now our spy tracking his solitary road to a small village about two leagues distance in order to avoid as much as possible the chance of falling in with the enemy's videttes until he had attained a point beyond the reach of suspicion at daybreak he arrived at the village of calvero del monte and entering a venta demanded of the old aberguero in good spanish some breakfast a few french riflemen were in the room smoking together with half a dozen spanish muleteers who immediately on the entrance of our peddler spy approached inquisitively to ascertain the contents of his packages 
he showed them several things quite like a regular trader and conversed with them in perfect good humour but his great object was to engage the attention and cultivate the acquaintance of the soldiers for that purpose accosting them in pure french he requested their observance and opinion of some peculiarly fine tobacco which he had to sell cheap then giving them a little to make trial of and speaking their own language with great fluency an instant friendship was brought about in told them a fictitious story of his birthplace being bagnires a small town celebrated for its baths just on the other side of the pyrenees a place with which he was well acquainted having resided there for a long time when a boy with an uncle who went there for the recovery of his health then like a true frenchman assuming a liveliness of disposition singing laughing chatting and recounting anecdotes about dear france in became so great a favourite that at the hour of relieving the pickets they begged him to accompany them the request was of course complied with and he thus soon passed through pickets advance guards etc to the main body of the army minutely noticing the various dispositions made and making the numbers and all that could be of service being fearful of committing anything to paper as the most trifling circumstance or observation might cause a discovery with the instant forfeiture of his life and as it would have been next to an impossibility for him to carry a recollection of every thing in his mind he resorted to a curious method of keeping his memory alive his box contained three separate compartments each of which had three divisions filled with trinkets of various kinds tobacco small packets of snuff scents soaps etc one part was considered the main body and headquarters the other parts were designed to represent other divisions advances etc in fact all that was necessary and when separately taken to pieces and regularly laid out they would represent the object intended as accurately as could be desired thus did in with his box strapped before him pass through the whole french army mingling with the soldiers and officers selling some few of his articles and minutely taking his observations of all that was going forward on one occasion he was placed in some jeopardy being seated on the ground in the evening laying out his plans an officer passing observed him attentively and before he was aware of it touched in on the shoulder asking him whether he was drawing his skill at copying the movements of an army or whether he intended entering the service and becoming a great general by study and practice in was at first much alarmed but finding the officer was not particularly scrutinizing in his manner he quickly recovered himself and without the least hesitation or apparent embarrassment he replied in so artless and clear a way as to throw off all suspicion and gave the officer an idea that his intellects were rather ill calculated for a general or any post in the army in soon replaced his box saluted the officer and joined the host of followers of which there is never any lack in such situations having soon gained all the information he wanted he quitted the french position by a different route to that he had entered stating his intention of proceeding on his journey to madrid and making a circuit of three or four leagues regained in safety the advance post of his own troops early in the morning and was immediately conducted by a corporal and file of men to the officer who commanded the guard to whom he was entirely unknown and had it been otherwise he could not have discovered himself he named the general of his division and requested to be carried before him the general welcomed his safe return and after some few inquiries accompanied him himself to the commander-in-chief to whom in so fully and ably explained every particular of the enemy's army and events so much precision and clearness that all was completely understood in was immediately recommended for the captain indeed it was but the just reward of merit in risking so dangerous a service to accomplish an object so in invaluable to the commander of an army and which he had done with such skill in now repaired to his quarters where he was received by his brother officers with every mark of sincere friendship the day was occupied in making the necessary preparations for an attack at daybreak orders arrived at the different posts in quick succession all was on the qui vive and at the close of the evening with the utmost caution and silence the troops commenced moving to take up position so as to meet more advantageously those of the enemy according to the report by in 
this at once proved the value of our friend's information the night was thus passed all anxiously anticipating the result of the morrow both as a body and to themselves individually alas many who were then so reflecting on that morrow ceased for ever to think on sublunary things at the first dawn of day a rocket from the right of the advance was the signal of attack and quickly afterwards an incessant roar of cannon and musketry reverberated through the air and shook the earth now did the vivid flashes send their death mandates to many a brave and gallant soldier the husband father son and lover the courageous and the coward all alike fell without distinction foes and friends lay heaped together in one short minute in close embrace at rest and peace with each other for ever the battle raged with the utmost fury the whole day positions were taken and retaken men fought hand to hand till toward sunset then it was that the french after struggling to the last began a rapid retreat leaving several hundreds of dead and dying on the field with all their baggage and material the british troops triumphantly entered the town the victory was complete thanks were due to in for the assistance he had afforded by his valuable information but alas fate ordained he should not be conscious of the result of his exertions he lived not to enjoy the proud feeling of the glory of this day would have given him when the returns were sent in poor in was among the killed and by inquiries in the regiment it was ascertained that he had fought nobly during almost the whole day and it was not till nearly the close of it that the fatal bullet carried its billet thus ended the short but brilliant career of one alike distinguished as an ornament to his profession as he was for his private virtues peace to his monies end of section seven end of the rover volume one number one edited by seba smith and lawrence Labrie.